Welcome everyone to a conversation with Judith Bowers. My name is Emma Smith. I'm the project manager with Empowered Conversations, which is an Age UK Salford project. Absolutely delighted to be having a conversation with Judith today, who is one of my colleagues from Empowered Carers. So thank you so much, Judith, for giving us your time today. Thank you. If you haven't been to one of these before, uh, you should only see myself and Judith on the screen, but you can chat to us. So there's a little chat function at the bottom, which you can give us a little wave and say hello, uh, hello in. There's also a Q&A function at the bottom. So if at any time you have a question, if you drop it in the Q&A, um, we will pick it up um, at, the end of, at the end of our chat today. Um, so as I said, I, I work for Empowered Conversations. Empowered Conversations deliver communication courses for family carers of people with dementia across Greater Manchester. We also offer one-to-one -one support, and that's where Judith comes in through Empowered Carers, and that's in Salford and Bolton. Um, in addition to those, as a, and as a consequence of COVID, we started doing things like this, so these little webinars. So we do these every maybe one or two a month, and then we record and pop them up on YouTube and then more people can access them. So I think that's probably my spiel done in under a minute, <laughs> Judith. So if it's OK, I'm going to hand over to you for the presentation. Oh, well, thank you. Let's see if I can uh, share this screen. Perfect. Right, can everybody see that? Great, yes. great, lovely. Welcome everybody, thank you for uh, joining in. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Fidget Widget Toolkit. Um, the Fidget Widget Toolkit development lie, uh, <laughs> lay within a project called Positive Connections. And this was uh, when I worked for the Alzheimer's Society. I was project lead and also a dementia advisor and trainer. And it was a collaborative research project along with the University of Central Lancashire, uh, namely Jane Suyard, who worked on the design side and the creative side. And also Carol Bernabda, who helped with the testing and the mapping. So what did the project involve? It was an innovative, Oh, I've gone too far, sorry. An innovation project involving the design, testing and evaluation of an interactive intervention <clears throat> based on repetitive movements. The repetitive movements we looked at was uh, fidgeting for the person with dementia and the caregivers, focusing around the later stages of dementia. The aims were to provide meaningful engagement and occupation and also support communication and enhance well-being. My background is a little bit um, odd, but I think my background helped me um, develop the Fidget Widget Toolkit and look at communication skills. Um, looking really at uh, movement observation and also lectured in biomechanics and engineering and then I had 13 years experience with the Alzheimer's Society um, visiting oh, lot, lots and lots of people all over the years. So why fidgeting? Uh, Emma, can people put their hands up? in this oh they can look there's a raise your hand thing at the bottom raise your hand so if you've done it before <laughs> if everybody's ready to raise their hand or not why focusing on fidgeting so hands up who fidgets themselves Ooh, five, this, is, this is so six. cool we've never six. ever done this function Ooh. before Six, including yourself. Oh, great. Right, another another question. So pop, pop your hand down. Another question coming up. Hands up, who finds other people's fidgeting annoying? Not your own fidgeting. Who finds other fidgeting, people's fidgeting annoying? 
four, four out of the six. So that's quite a lot. Right, put your hands down. Another question. Hands up who finds their own fidgeting annoying? Three. Well, what we were finding is that other people's fidgeting is more annoying than your own. But we were looking across a population of people that did have dementia. But before we developed the fidget widget, we'd worked on this for about eight years. And some of the first projects that uh, I did with Jane, Jane Suyav, was about sensory projects that we could have in, in the library and resource centre that we had in the Alzheimer's Society. And one of them, I don't know if you can make this out um, very clearly, was actually a fuzzy felt aquarium. And we had that in activities um, within the centre and loaned it out to people. My involvement as well, over the years was also with the local memory assessment services and the mental health hospital and they were looking at the environment there they were, they were looking to improve the environment particularly for people that maybe were agitated and we started thinking we had meetings for quite a long time we started thinking about what what could people handle that may be distracted them if they were feeling agitated and we came up with quite a few ideas um, one of them was actually to Im embed things in the wall that people could move but of course we run out of money and uh, unfortunately that didn't go ahead but the seeds were planted about this idea and I was also involved with um, a caring cafe project which um, involved getting the Alzheimer's Society into the health service and again had a lot of contact with people. The actual toolkit was manufactured in 2018 but there was a lot of work going on before then. So what was it that um, I was observing? There were a, a lot of repetitive movements or interaction that people with dementia were um, showing. There was opening and closing, uh, handbag, drawers, book, purse, tapping, tapping fingers, tapping a pen, tapping your leg, tapping your foot, uh, picking things, uh, picking um, objects or picking the edge of a mat, stroking um, objects, Wrapping in paper, this was um, one of the things a carer brought to me and said, um, my, my husband is wrapping his shoe in paper. And um, she thought this was a, a bit unusual, particularly the shoe was on, on his leg, on his foot and bending down to do it. So we suggested getting a little box and wrapping paper and wrapping up because he was doing this very carefully. Um, people were asking, why is the person doing this? Uh, perhaps the person was obsessed with a particular movement. It had to be a particular action. Perhaps the person finds comfort or perhaps it is a sign of restlessness. And we, we looked at the research, uh, this is Kit Wood's um, flower, identi uh, identifying the psychological needs of a person. So when we thought of designing something, we had to look at all of these needs to see if we could design something that brought comfort. Sorry, that's uh, moved on a bit to um, bring comfort, bring identity for the person, let them be occupied, but also be included. And, um, you know, for, for carers as well, we, we, we looked, we thought, well, there aren't many things out there, and this is going back a number of years. There, there were things that, um, like the fiddle muffs and things like that, but you couldn't pick up the object and, and actually manipulate it. Um, 
So that, that was the difference between our approach and things that were out there. And also looking at the needs of a person with dementia, because this is from Kitwood's work again, in the course of dementia, a person will try and use whatever resources he or she still has available. And if some of the more sophisticated means of action have dwindled away, it may be necessary to fall back on ways that are more basic and more deeply learned because um, a person will use what, what we call uh, retained skills. Um, so we, we were looking at designing something where maybe this unmet need of wanting to fidget and manipulate objects could, could be um, fulfilled. Um, this is the, um, the prototype box that we used. It didn't go to manufacture this one. It was too complicated. But we started testing in people's own homes and donated the box to people afterwards. And then in the following year, this is when we got funding to actually produce prototypes. We, we then started uh, testing in Lancashire County Council care homes and developing some communication um, courses. <clears throat> we did various um, testing procedures, but one of the main things was to have enough kits so that we could donate it to, to the family afterwards if they wanted to, to keep it. So J Jane, Jane Suyar, the designer, will now describe to you the uh, design process and then we can have a look at the kits uh, after this. We came up with the idea of a sensory store to explore the sense of touch from a variety of objects. These included feathers, sponges, brushes, tassels, beads and a whole range of soft and hard, rough and smooth objects. They were quite random items, nothing specific, but they all had at least one sensory property that was touchy-feely. The team then collected data from questionnaires on the positive qualities that people enjoyed about the objects. Reflecting on this research, we were able to note that people enjoyed the interaction through touchy-feely words, such as squeeze, squash, push, pull, stroke, etc. This research was an important connection to the design and supported the overall project concept. It was this collection that informed further research into developing something that could be handled for qualities of sensory play. And in one of our brainstorming team sessions, the name Fidget Widget was generated, which has now been trademarked as the Fidget Widget Toolkit. In designing, we are always looking to make creative connections that are relevant and appropriate. So working around the theme of fidgeting, I linked it to the term fiddlesticks and initially worked with students to explore this. It was a perfect connection to fidgeting and a great starting point as it gave a potential direction to simply explore a set of sticks for the widgets. Taking inspiration from the term fiddlesticks provided a concept to work with but the actual shape of the sticks went through many stages of development and over the course of two to three years we worked with various students, technicians and many others to achieve the basic shapes out of wood. The size and shape needed to be handy and ergonomically considered. The material needed to be durable and soft, a feasible weight to hold, neutral in colour accessible and affordable for us to produce. We also wanted it to be aesthetically pleasing and so wood was our preferred choice because it had all these properties, except it was costly and so we had to fight off the use of plastic. One of the initial design stages was also working out how to get these sticks to encourage fidgeting. How do people fidget and what actions did we want these sticks to generate? 
Also looking back to the responses on what people enjoyed about the objects from the sensory store, they stated to action words such as squeeze, squash, push, pull, etc. Moving on to some of the design development, this was a lengthy process of researching objects that had the potential to turn, screw, pull, push, twiddle, etc. The objects collected were then used as inspiration to influence the designs in terms of shape, form, material, colour and interactive mechanisms. This example shows inspiration from screws, rolling pins and wooden nuts and bolts from children's toys that they could then turn and play with. The spin widget was influenced from a wooden puzzle and helicopter rotary blades. These are the first set of prototypes that went to be tested in care homes and participants' own homes. In producing the prototypes, it was an iterative process that went back and forth many times from design to testing, back to the drawing board, further design development, producing more prototypes, then testing again, and so on. We also worked on initial designs for the packaging with an MA student and took inspiration from Kitwood's five-sided petal flower. However, this packaging was too challenging for commercial production and so was redesigned. When we had finished the testing and design development, we came to a standstill. The funding had finished, so Judith and myself just couldn't get any further. But with the help of Peter Rowling, who is an innovation team project manager at UCLan, he took on this huge task and we managed to take the toolkit through its final stages to market. These are the five designs that were selected and went to manufacture. Twist, turn, slide, roll and spin. They all answer the design brief in that they were functional in stimulating repetitive actions. They were easy to navigate and explore, comfortable to hold, durable and safe, while at the same time they are errorless in that there is no right or wrong way to use them. And then visually they are stigma free as they are not childlike in appearance. So this is the final Fidget Widget Toolkit. UCLan and Alzheimer's Society collaborated with Active Minds to license this Fidget Widget Toolkit and take it to market. So one of the most important things that we found in, in the testing was that there was no right or wrong way to interact. And this was very important because it didn't threaten the person with dementia because we, we, wanted, we wanted them not to look like something else and say, what do you do with this? Or this reminds you of a hammer or, or, or whatever. And people showed great creativity because there was no right or wrong way to, to use it. And people didn't use words. If words were becoming difficult, they could use nonverbal techniques um, to present the box to people or present the, the particular fidget widget. And, and it was also very inclusive. The actual box that's available now, Active Minds rebranded and they're now called Relish. So this is what the, the current box, box looks like. So I'll just come out of this now and um, show you the, the box and the, the widgets as well. So this, this was the... Um, prototype box that we couldn't take forwards. Um, it's too complicated to manufacture as well. So the widgets were held in that and we presented them either in a group session or one-to-one. -one. And uh, these are some of the widgets that we have. So I believe Emma also has um, a pack of widgets. So 
we'll we'll have a, a go with this and then look at the widgets and then we'll probably go to questions. So this this was actually one of my favourite ones. And people did did they maybe built their own structures with with widgets or just feel the actual um, texture. So I'll pass this one to to Emma now and she'll have a go now by the magic of the internet. Here you are, Emma. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Judith. You don't know how long we practiced that. <laughs> <laughs> Judith gets shouting at me. Did it wrong? Wow, they're, they're so lovely, Judith. They just, um, they're very tactile. Mm. It just makes you, yeah, just want to explore what you can do with it. Spin it one way, spin it the other way. Yeah. As soon as the box arrived in my house, uh, my eight-year-old daughter said, can I have them? Because <laughs> fidgets, fidgets are a big thing now for eight-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, no, these are my fidgets. But yeah, they're really, really, they're just nice to hold. Oh, mm. I like doing yes. that as well. Yeah, a, a lady discovered that one in testing. I thought, oh, I didn't know it did that. And it can also make a, make a, make a noise. Was there, was there another one you liked, Emma? I think I probably like this one. Mm. Yes. It just feels lovely, doesn't it? It's so, yes. so well made and mm. yeah. There's a, there's a story behind this one. I'll just, I'll just tell it very quickly. When we were testing in the first year, we were getting prototypes and the technicians at, um, at UCLAN were making the, the widgets but it coincided with the exams for students and we needed some more to carry on testing. So I contacted a local wood turner and explaining about fidget widgets is a little bit um, odd. So he said, well, do you have a prototype? Yes. So I took it over to his wonderful workshop that he had and he was really taken with, with, with them. You know, we had prototypes and he said, oh, you know, and he said, yeah, I'll have a go at, at making one and you come and see, you know, if, if you like it. So he did and I went over and I thought it was wonderful. And he said, no, it's not right. This the gauge of the um, of this thread wasn't right and the feel wasn't right. And he said, I'll, I'll go to try ag again. And um, I said, he said, how many do you need? And I said, uh, 10. And he, he made he made us 10. He wouldn't take any payment for it. He really enjoyed. And the, like you say, the finish was wonderful. It is lovely. Sorry, everybody, that you can't hold this. No, no, the, the, this, is the, this is the thing. The, the, this one. Oh, you got sorry. that. No, Emma, you go. No, you this go. one's nice as well. So it's got like a little ball bearing that just sort of spins around it. So you can. Yeah. Make nice a sound, sound or you can just try and balance it round, and yeah, lovely. Yes, the, the, this one, the in, initial design, we we wanted to have um, a little like ball that we could push round, but we couldn't get we couldn't get the fit right. It was either falling out or too stiff to move. So this came about quite accidentally. It, it is a, a little bit of a challenge with this one but the the noise is quite quite uh, addictive yeah right, sorry for this we've not talked about this one. Oh, this this one yes the, the, this one one lady took to this one re really a lot and it also while while she was uh, interacting with this you can also uh, ping it she she was taking a drink and uh, this was in, in a care home. Um, and they said, oh, normally we have to really encourage the lady to drink. Um, she'll leave the cup of tea there or take it to the, to the sink, but she doesn't actually drink. But uh, she did on, on that occasion. I'll just move on with the presentation and then we'll take some um, questions. I'll, I'll stop playing my fidget widgets. <laughs> Yes, they are addicted, aren't they? Addictive. Right, we'll just share this one. Is 
some of the uh, nonverbal um, aspects links up with uh, Maggie Ellis's work, what um, what we were witnessing was people using a lot of nonverbal um, interactions, and along along with speech, these are known as the fundamental communication skills. And fundamental communication skills are are really what people are born with or develop and often are retained with people uh, living with dementia. And in the research that um, we're, we're carrying on doing, we, we're going we're looking at could expression through the hands be part of these communication skills? Because people, given the opportunity to to interact, um, actually took took part in in the um, in the widget widget. This was. Um, a gentleman who was uh, living at home, he was bed bound, and the um, the carer summed it up by saying it's the only thing he can do for himself. It gives him that little bit of independence. So the that fidget widget, well, all, all of the basic shape, uh, are, um, a shape so that they can sit between the palms as well supported with with a, a pillar they can actually be held like that and he could interact with with the actual beads and and you, you could hear this interaction as well and for, for the caregiver that was extremely extremely powerful so i think we'll go to questions now emma if that's all right oh yeah well Okay. <laughs> Are you going to stop sharing? Is that all of your presentation, or do you want some questions? I, I, I can I can carry on, but we could take questions if you like. Well, should we give people a couple of minutes just to think of their questions? Right. Um, I'm to, to carry on with with the yeah, presentation. Okay. Carry on for a few minutes, and we'll give people that chance just to formulate their questions and drop them into the Q and A, okay. and we'll come up from there. So another um, on another testing occasion, this this was in a, a group setting um, where the support worker was helping within a lounge setting, and um, what one of the ladies was really keen on the fidget widgets and was collecting them as they were passed round and keeping them on the right hand side of a chair, storing them on the arm of the chair. But um, the support worker asked for them back, which she reluctantly gave, and she was left then without the widgets and started fidgeting with her glasses and her fingers and, and appearing to be a little bit restless and also um, showing a bit of uh, discontent when she was asked a direct question. Um, she didn't. She didn't um, particularly like that. And uh, when she got the widget back, she was really quite happy with with that and started interacting again. And this this is uh, back to Kitwood's flower, showing how this interaction can can fulfil fulfil a person's needs and help enhance well being. And a person can get comfort through the attachment and the shared experience. This lady felt part of a group, even though she was becoming quite nonverbal, but she was happy within the group setting occupied. Her identity, she had a very unique way of interacting with the widgets. Um, we learned an awful lot of different ways to, to use this. Um, occupation, she had choice and control, which is very important, um, actually gave her the chance to be creative and inventive. Um, and she was included, there's no right or wrong way. And she certainly had attachment to certain widgets and also certain ways of, um, of interacting with the widgets. So we're hopefully taking this forward with expression through the hands to give choice and control. And, and it links up with my current work with, with Empowered. 
about invitation to respond, which you may be familiar with through, through Emma's um, work. Because in, in the fidget widgets, you can invite people to respond without words by demonstrating and not, not threatening that there's a right or wrong way to, to use that. So if, if you're interested, there's my email to contact me. Oh, oh any questions? <laughs> You know what I've just been doing, Judith, it just came back to me what my nana used to do. And my nana didn't have dementia, but she used to sit there twiddling her thumbs. Mm -hmm. And that was a proper thing, wasn't it? People are like, oh, twiddle your thumbs, sit there and twiddle your thumbs. And yeah. you just sit there twiddling your thumbs. <laughs> I don't think people do it anymore. Where, where's all the thumb twiddling gone? Yeah. <laughs> So if anybody wants to, if anyone's interested in buying these, so they go onto that website, don't they, Judith? Yes, the uh, Relish, the, the, the website, the, um, the single ones retail around with, without that £10 and the box retails around £50. Brilliant. And you told me, so the these are oh wonderful presentation. Thank you. What's John said? Oh, I need to leave the presentation so soon. Sorry. Good to learn about the attention to detail and development. Um, and about Widget's use of um, Kitwood's con in the Kitwood context. Thank you. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you for joining us today. Let me see if we've got any questions yet. See, you might have just done such a good presentation. <laughs> that, um, I've stunned people in silence. No, you haven't. You haven't at all. Vicky said, it's not a question, but I'm going to buy a toolkit for my mum. As well as being a machinist, her dad, who she remembers well, had a workshop that he would take her in a lot. Nice. Yeah. And one of the, one of the things, if uh, because the the the, the boat ones, I think are they, they open differently. Like I said, you you can um, just get your own sort of container to to put them in, uh, which are really quite. Um, quite cheap to to have to to present it and or or get the person to to open them or or a bag and tell what's been in that one <laughs> I noticed it's empty but i'm not yes saying it's, it's, no it's, judgment it's empty so you can like present them like this and i can imagine like if um you know as a, as a young person you've spent a lot of time in workshops with your dad you know these sort of Mm. nice things nice mm. and tactile not necessarily obviously a workshop would have tools that you would be doing this with or doing that yeah. with, whereas this you could sort of have that connection um and it might take you back to that place but not necessarily of any pressure of like oh that's a screwed right you know whatever it is in in the workshop yes yeah it promoted conversation as well when i was visiting people in in care homes with the family member um the, the actual uh, feel of, of the wood brought a conversation about a gentleman that made um, a little cart attached to his bike the, and his son was there as well and his son um, said oh yeah you know and I was like five at that time so um, that was a gentleman that built his own structure with with them which uh, I thought was was lovely. You know what would be really interesting, and I know I know it's just like they're just to use and we don't need a purpose, but mm. watching how people use them and understanding what their previous experiences yes. were in life would be really yeah. interesting, wouldn't it? So if someone was an engineer, mm. would they handle it in a different way to somebody who was yes. a dinner lady? Yes. And one of the, fir the, the first ones uh, of these were, were rather stiff to turn. And uh, one gentleman said, I think you need to put some uh, oil on this to, to get it moving, you know. So and sometimes people or, you know, they weren't particularly interested. But when, when they saw the people using them, they, they started using them and were just fascinated and, and carried on. Did you notice in your observations, Judith? You know, was there a, like, did men like them more than women or women like them more than men or it didn't make any um, difference at all? We, we we tried to design them that they were equally um, for men and women. We didn't see 
we didn't see much difference. Um, people tended to go for, for this one, uh, but, all, but also this one. And in, in some cases, it did remind people of, of where they used to work, but not, but not always. No, we wanted them to be equally for, for women and, and men. And I like the idea that, you know, you, so you didn't, when you, you know, you came up with these, but you didn't just like throw them at someone and go, there you go. Oh no. You go. You then, you then did some sessions with them about how they could interact with yes. them, how they could connect people into that interaction. So, you know, it wasn't just a case of passing it to someone, no. you, know, you might be. <laughs> so will you tell us a little bit about that then? So imagine I, so imagine that yeah. you just, you're handing this to me. What sort yeah. of well, the, you offer? The, the awareness sessions we did for, for care homes involved communication skills in general and particularly focusing on uh, non-verbals. So we, we, we got um, two people to interact with the kit. These were care workers and one observing and then asked them what showed the list of non-verbal possibilities and asked in that interaction what was used and could, could they use these and tune into these with people with dementia look look looking at that so we we did uh, that and and then thing things like um starting off the movement yourself and depending on the person's dexterity uh, as well um placing them if possible in front of the person so they can access them and like I say there's no right or wrong way but in, if it was in a, a small group setting to uh, make sure people were pass, maybe passing them round because the, the starting a movement can be quite difficult for people's mobility um, wasn't and in, in the sessions in the, in the care homes uh, we videoed the session and also used that as well as dementia care mapping and fed it back to the care workers. And that was very, very powerful. We had a discussion about communication and interaction and what things went well or what things didn't go as well. And, and people were uh, really quite pleased, pleased with that outcome. Yeah, and I imagine that's really important um, part of, of, of like, you know, buying the kit is to understand how you could use some, you know, various communication skills to connect people with whatever they're holding, yes. or, you know, in, in whatever way. So in the very simplest way of maybe doing some mirroring. Yes, yes, good. copying uh, the, the action. And if you're in a small group session, people look and um, watch each other. I can see the polls popped up now. It, it, it has popped up. Um, Rachel said that um, she's hoping that the, the Bolton Tech Project are hoping um, to have those on display from from week beginning the 6th of June for people to try. Thank you for sharing. All right. Rachel. Right. Any more questions? Any more comments? Um, Judith, is there anything else that you want to share with people? Um, I don't I don't think so. Thank you for, for coming to this presentation. Oh, thank you so much for that. And obviously, I will be returning these. Oh, yes. I'm afraid, before... you'll, I'm afraid you'll have to. <laughs> I don't want them to go into the, the enormous fidget box that's upstairs. <laughs> oh, Liliana said, thank you. It's very interesting. Thank you. thank you for joining us, Liliana. Thank you for your time, Judith. Right. Um, we've got some webinars coming up. So we've got one on the 8th of June, and that's with the Empowered Conversations research team. And then, oh, Vicky said, thank you so much. So interesting and useful. Thank you, Vicky. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got some more coming up in July. We've got the Manchester Camerata. We've got our very own Empowered Carers. And we've got one with Kellen Lee that will finish us off just before the summer. Thank you all so much. I hope that you have a lovely Wednesday afternoon. Thank you for your time. And thank you for sharing that with us, Judith. All right. Thank you, Emma.